think Bishop is already back. Hallelujah. I am back. I'm back and I hope I'm clearer now. Praise the Lord. So uh, I was talking about grace and that uh, everything uh, we do, we do get from God is by grace. And, and so without grace, what could we do? What could we do? And so the, 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 you know, God has provided these great riches in the, in, through our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ. So even the law and the prophets testify to this. They testify to the fact that the grace of God is now here. You remember on the Mount of uh, Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah, Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets came to Jesus when he was transfigured and his face became like lightning and his clothes were so bright and two of these ancient men came and they, and they, and they were talking with him. Luckily enough, Peter, John, and James were, were on that mountain, but they had fallen asleep, but they could see, when they woke up, they could see the Moses and, uh, and, and Elijah talking with, with, with Jesus. The law and the prophets have come to bear witness to what this was going to be like. In fact, Moses and uh, Elijah, they, their hands are, their hands were always uh, on their on their face, looking at the horizon. When will Jesus appear? When will grace begin to be the you know the commodity that every servant of God will share, will share? And so, yes, with their hands like this, they appeared to see exactly what this grace meant. And so God gave us Jesus Christ and the cloud came and covered the top of the mountain when the cloud covered and the cloud disappeared. Only Jesus could be seen. Only Jesus could be seen. This means Moses and the law have come and gone. It means that Elijah and the prophets have come and gone, they, they have gone. Now Jesus is the only one left to deal with us. We can deal with God uh, through grace, through, through Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, we can now connect with God. This favor that God gives to us in order to, to, to make us one with him, we get it through grace. We can never work for this. We can never do something to God in order for God to accept us. We can never pay anything in order to, to, to be related to God. So that's why the theologian says any, you know, the, the method by which we can get connected with God is by grace, grace and by grace. Everything is by grace. So now God put, puts us uh, puts us on this one level, both Jews and this and and the, and, 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 the, and the Gentiles. He puts us on this level, this one level, puts us under grace, and by that we can now get into the favor, the unlimited favor. And this unmerited favor that we can we can we can uh, get in, in touch with God, and so it looks like God puts on the glass of Jesus Christ like this in order to see the world and to see each one of us. When He sees you through Jesus Christ, He sees you righteous. He sees you holy. 
he sees you as somebody who is related to God or a servant of God or a son and daughter to God. This is, this is amazing. It is what grace does. And so friends, the grace of God has appeared, says Titus. It has appeared to, to everybody. So that, you know, it is through grace that God is seeing us. God puts on Christ and sees you and sees you righteous. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he sees you holy. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he sees you redeemed, saved, because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is nothing which we can, there is nothing we can do, we do about it. We cannot do anything about it because it is, because it is done. God has done it and uh, he, he, he has done it through Jesus Christ. I want to uh, develop this further. The benefits of grace are so many. The benefits of grace are so many and uh, we want to see a few of them. In fact, in the, in the whole book of the, the book of Romans, you will find it is talking about this, it's talking about grace and some of the benefits that grace brings to us are shown uh, throughout the, 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 the book of, uh, of, uh, of Romans. In fact, if you have the time, you need to read Romans because it explains most of the complicated uh, doctrines that that uh, uh, God God uses in order to bring a relationship between us and Him, and so I want to list quite a number of uh, maybe seven of these uh, uh, benefits that grace brings to us. The first is election. Election is the choice of God of you the choice of you and all others by God uh, uh, for a specific purpose, God elects us. The process of election or the, 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 the doctrine of election is just God putting his hand upon you for a specific purpose, to belong to him, to be a servant, to be a channel God does election because of his grace, not because you have done something tremendous or not because you are special. No, you are, remember, you are a sinner, a sinner, and God puts his hand upon you by this grace and gives you a purpose in life, gives you a specific duty to do. And so God elects some of us. He elects all the Christians, he elects, he puts his hand on them and gives them something to do for him, for him. In the end, you are going to account for what God has asked you to do. And some people have not sought the election and they have been elected, but, but, but they don't know exactly what God has elected them for. The second, what is atonement? Atonement, if you look at this word atonement, it is actually an abbreviation. It is, it is a combination, or rather a combination of words. At one meant, at one meant. God does at one meant. He brings two persons who have been separated because of conflict, because of misunderstanding, he brings at one man. So atonement is Jesus lifting us from our rebellion and bringing us to God and saying, God, you have to accept this one. He knows me. He, he, his record may not be perfect, but he knows me. He is in me. So you have to accept him. Jesus brings about at one man because of this grace that God has granted us at one man. You know, we are far, we are separated from God. Sins 
you know, the Garden of Eden, this separation, when God threw Adam and Eve out of the garden, we have been, we have been wandering in the wilderness like that. But because of Jesus' death on the cross, he brought a bridge that we can cross over to reach God, to be one with God. At one moment, this is a benefit of grace. The third benefit of grace is justification. Justification. Justification is God's act of declaring you innocent. God declaring you not guilty because of what Jesus did for you. Because of what Jesus did for you. We are all rebellious. We are all sinners. But when God puts on Jesus Christ as his glass and looks at you, he sees just as if you have never sinned. Justification means just as if you have never sinned. Because your sins are wiped away, because your rebellion is, is canceled, because you are brought a one with God, then you are justified. God says not guilty. And when a judge says not guilty, it is as if you never, he, he, you know, most of our judges, most of our, of, our, of, our, of our earthly judges, they are not, they are not, sometimes they are not even correct. You must have murdered somebody, but the judge declares you innocent. He declares you not guilty. And so, but this doesn't mean that you are not guilty before God. You are before God. There's the fact that you have never, but the, the, the truth that you actually, uh, you, you murder somebody, still exists with God. But with God, when God declares you guilty, because he looks at you through what Jesus did for you and for me, and he says you are, you are not guilty, he removes every aspect, every trace of sin from you. He wipes it clean. Your, your plate is, is cleaned. And so, yes, you are justified because of this grace. You are justified. Another big word, which is a benefit that Jesus has given to us by the grace of God, is called propitiation. Propitiation. Propitiation is the removal of God's punishment for sin through the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died, uh, as a sinless person died on the cross. So why did Jesus go on that cross? He went there because of you and because of me. He took my place. The cross is my cross. The, the thorns on his head were my thorns. The nails that went into his hands were my nails. The, the spear that went into his side was my spear. And so Jesus took your place, a sinless man for sinful people. He took your place. In fact, there's a song which says, I was guilty with nothing to say, and they were coming to take me away. But then a voice from heaven was heard and said, let him go, let him go, take me instead. That's exactly what Jesus did for you and for me. He took your place. He took my place. And so, friends, he is, he has brought about propitiation propitiation. So Jesus, God removes the punishment for sin, for my sin, removes it from me because of what the perfect sacrifice Jesus did on the cross. The, 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 the next big word is redemption, redemption. 
This is the price that Jesus paid to set us free from the bondage of sin. He set us free. He came and redeemed us from the bondage of sin. Jesus died in your place. He died in my place. He took my place. He took your place. He paid the penalty for your sins. On the cross, the wages of sin is death. And Jesus died. He took your place. And so there is now redemption. Now, there is a redemption. You know, debtors in Israel, if you have a debt and you are failing to pay, the, you know, the, 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 the owner, um, the, the person you have, you have been indebted to will come. Since you cannot pay, he binds you and takes you to the slave market and sells you as a slave because you are a debtor. You have failed to pay the debt that you owed. And so this is what Jesus did. While we were sinners and sin bound us to be, uh, to be debtors to God, and God was going to, 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 to take us to the slave market and sell us off because we have, we have not paid. And so Jesus comes, Jesus goes to the market. He pays the debt. He pays your debt. He pays my debt. He pays for the sins of all mankind. But he releases us, he, say, he sets us free. Let him go, let him go, let this person go. You know, and he took your place and he paid the debt. But he did not leave the market. He closed that market. That even if you have another debt, you are not going to do business again in this market. You will not be sold again. Jesus pays the, 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 the debt, but he removes us from the bondage and now closes, closes this market and writes, no more slave market here. No more slave market here. Just like a fisherman goes into the lake and, and gets a fish out, and then puts a sign, no more fishing here, no more fishing here, because he had paid the debt for everybody. Nobody should continue to linger into sin and continue to be in bondage again. He closes that, that market. That is what redemption is about. So he has come to this slave market where sin has made us uh, you know, slaves. He pays the debt for those sins and he sets us free and closes this market. Nobody is going to be sold again in this market. That is what grace has brought to us. Now, the next um, um, benefit of grace is sanctification. Sanctification is the process of becoming more and more like Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit. This is wonderful. Grace is amazing because God didn't want to leave us struggling, trying to struggle to, to get to where God wants us to be. He didn't. He did it for us. He did it for you and for me. Sanctification is God pouring his spirit on our lives, filling us with his spirit, and then allowing us to day by day outgrow some of the weaknesses we have in this world, our, 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 uh, our, our affinity to sin, the, the, you, know, you know, some of us who, uh, who were saved much later, I was 22 when I was saved. 
and I had acquired from age 15, even from birth, certain things which, which were never there in, in, in our family. My mother never brewed anything, but I was, I was, a, I was, a, I was a champion in, in drinking alcohol. And, and I had acquired this during my time as a young person in, in secondary school, in primary school, in secondary school, in high school. I, I had acquired some of these habits. But when Jesus saved me, I could look at a bottle of Waraji and it is as if I never drank before. Some of these things, you cannot explain it to anybody except experienced by the person, except you can be experienced. So sanctification, I can never explain it to any of you who are listening to me because the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and making you an overcomer, overcoming some of your basic human you know, weaknesses and making you a person you know, who, who, who can come to God in confidence and somebody who can, you know, take some of these things which you never, which you, you could never do and, 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 and just gives you victory over them. So that is the process of sanctification, becoming more and more like Jesus because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. It is by grace. Nobody can try, nobody can add anything on his salvation. And then you can, so that you can go to God and say, see God, I've been, you know, I've achieved this, I've achieved this. So I need to be in heaven. No, it is by grace, unmerited, unmerited uh, favor that God has given to us. Lastly, we have glorification, glorification. The ultimate state of the believer after death, when we become like Jesus, when we join the heavenly hordes, when we join the saints above, we are glorified. These bodies of ours become like, you know, the one of angels. We shine before God. We are glorified. People who die today, even of COVID, are glorified in heaven. You can never find a headache, find malaria, find things uh, that, 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 uh, that make us humans here. You can never find it there. We are glorified. That's why some people think death is total healing. Death is total healing. In fact, if somebody dies, we say, yes, he has died, but he has been glorified. He has been glorified. He has attained that glorious nature that God has prepared for us when we get to heaven and we meet with Jesus. Do you see no difference? We will be like him. The Bible says we will be like Jesus because of the, pro because of the, the process of sanctification and therefore Glory, our glorification is assured. It is assured. So grace is a wonderful thing that God has given to us. We can never draw near to God by any means apart from because of the grace of God. It is by grace that you have been saved. And through faith, it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God so that nobody can boast. And so brothers and sisters, throughout Uganda, it is grace. Let us not, in fact, in Kampala, I'm beginning to hear certain things. People are saying, you can be saved, yes, but you need to do this. You need to be, become like a Jew. You need to, this heresy is, is, is around in Kampala and we are hearing it. And I want to pray right now. This heresy must go because it is by grace that we are saved. Through faith, not anything we do, not by praying by the size of the moon, not by, 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 by thinking that 
God demands something from us in order to accept us. No, we are accepted by grace through faith. This is the only thing. Many, 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 many of you who are saved, you were not saved because you are better. You are not saved because you had 12 fingers. You are not saved because you have five eyes. No, you are saved by grace through faith. So the little effort is at this is faith. Faith is just believing God for who he has said, for what he has said, and for who he is. Just that. So we cannot, we cannot uh, step a little aside in order to add something to what God has given to us. No, it is by grace through faith that we are saved. And this grace is available to all, to every one of you, each one of us. We are saved by grace. And so if there are any three ways by which we can obtain anything from God, it is by grace. Secondly, by grace and by grace. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May God honor this, our, our, our lunch hour. And may God make you, you know, draw you to himself by his grace and helps you to, to exercise faith in the things that God has already done for us. God bless you. And, uh, and, 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 and may you also bless others who, with, the, with what God has done. Right, Thank Reverend you. Dr. Joel Obetia, for that wonderful and energizing and informed and enriching sermon. Thank you so much. Let's have.